We're on the brink, everyone. Just a day after the major developments with B11 and S29, Elon Musk unveiled the launch timeline for Flight 4. So when's the big moment? Well, on May 11th, SpaceX shared an image of Megabay's interior, showcasing the activities surrounding B11. Building on this excitement, Elon Musk himself shared an awe-inspiring snapshot. It captured the pivotal moment when B11 embarked on its journey from Megabay to the launch site. Over in Megabay 2, S29 stood ready, gearing up to follow its companion. And on our side, we have S30, freshly returned to High Bay after acing its static fire test, now bustling with further preparations. Pretty incredible, isn't it? Flight 4 and Flight 5 both captured in one mesmerizing picture. But the spotlight shifted when John Krause's account posed a question under Elon Musk's image, seeking details about the schedule, objectives, and profile of Flight 4. In response, Elon Musk simply stated, probably three to five weeks. I've never felt the anticipation for a flight so palpably close. Following the May schedule announcements for Flight 4, many of us were understandably concerned when there was no movement with the Flight 4 hardware for over a month, but now everything is revving up and Elon Musk himself has confirmed it. Before delving into recent preparations, let's discuss the launch schedule. Elon Musk's estimation of three to five weeks from now means we're looking at a June launch. In the best case scenario, it could happen in the first week of June or in the later scenario around the second or third week. This plan would put Flight 4 on the launch pad just three months after Flight 3, which is a shorter gap than between Flight 2 and Flight 3. What week or even the exact date in June do you think Flight 4 will take off? Drop your predictions in the comments and let's see who can foresee this flight's launch date. As for my prediction, I'm leaning towards June 9th, or Sunday, or the 16th, because it would mark 420 days since April 20th, the launch date of Flight 1. If you know, you know. Let the countdown begin. Elon Musk's latest announcement is grounded in solid developments. The Flight 4 hardware has sprung into action recently. In the early hours of May 10th, the booster transport stand made its way to the Mega Bay, where B-11 was promptly hoisted onto it. By the afternoon of the same day, as S-30 returned to the production site, B-11 emerged from Megabay's doors, revealing the addition of the hot staging atop, an element absent during its previous static fire test. At approximately 10.10pm, it embarked on its journey to the launch pad, reaching the OLM by the morning of May 11th. Meanwhile, S-29 departed from High Bay on the morning of May 10th, making its way to Megabay 2. By the morning of May 12th, following the previously outlined road closure schedule, S-29 rolled out of Mega Bay 2 and arrived at the launch pad gearing up for full stacking onto the booster to commence the wet dress rehearsal test. Regarding the test schedule, SpaceX has slated road closures for May 13th, the 14th, the 15th, and the 16th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. However, a recent Marine Safety Information Bulletin issued a hazard area notice around Boca Chica Beach for May 16th from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., indicating a potential wet dress rehearsal test day. The preceding days are likely devoted to meticulous preparations for the test, although the test could still occur on any of the earlier dates. Once the wet dress rehearsal test concludes, the final hurdle will be navigating the FAA procedures. SpaceX must compile comprehensive reports detailing the issues and impacts encountered during Flight 3, followed by submitting license modifications to conclude the mishap investigation. Subsequently, they'll need to implement any corrective actions mandated by the FAA. Recent reports have cited FAA official Kevin Coleman stating the next Starship launch must clear the mishap investigation and undergo license modifications due to plans for some different things. While everything could wrap up by May, there's no firm commitment from the FAA. Upon completion of all requirements, the FAA will issue the official launch license for Flight 4. In addition to unveiling the launch schedule, Elon Musk outlined the objective for Flight 4. He emphasized, the goal is for the ship to withstand maximum heating or ideally surpass the previous attempt. Indeed, the term max heating points to the crucial re-entry phase. In the previous flight, S-28 showcased an impressive few minutes during re-entry, although it was short-lived due to various issues, notably with the heat shield system. 
Consequently, following the static fire process, S29 underwent significant upgrades to this system, including notable modifications to the nose cone. These enhancements are poised to make a substantial difference in this flight, enabling S-29 to withstand temperatures exceeding 1500 degrees Celsius. At present, Elon Musk's confidence seems tempered compared to the previous flight, as he's mentioned a secondary objective for this mission, surpassing the previous attempt's performance. However, given the wealth of experience gained from past re-entry attempts, there's ample reason to believe in the success of this launch. Following the re-entry phase, S-29 will make a splashdown in the ocean. As for B-11, Elon Musk outlined its mission during a company discussion in early April. Instead of culminating with an ocean landing, it will utilize a virtual tower system for its touchdown. The specifics of this system remain undisclosed, awaiting further updates from SpaceX. It's likely that as the Flight 4 launch license undergoes review, the FAA will demand clarification on this new landing method for evaluation before granting official licensing. In addition to Elon Musk's recent pivotal updates and the advancements in Flight 4 hardware, SpaceX has been bustling with activity. Following testing with S-30, Test Stand Pad B is currently undergoing demolition. Meanwhile, S-31, the prototype slated for Flight 6, has transitioned from the Rocket Garden to the Massey test site, where S-26 had recently arrived. However, during cryogenic testing, an unexpected incident occurred. A fire broke out in the liquid oxygen tank area accompanied by smoke. Preliminary investigations suggest possible damage to wiring, leading to contact with the fuel and sparking the issue, no pun intended. Despite this setback, progress continues at a rapid pace. The excitement was palpable with the testing of S-30 even before the liftoff of Flight 4, and now progress exceeds our initial expectations. Notably, if all goes according to plan, S-31 could mark a significant milestone by becoming the first ship to return to Starbase and land using the Mechazilla arm a long-awaited achievement. It's an exciting prospect, and it's hoped that this milestone flight could occur within the year. Are you ready and eager for the upcoming flights? Show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing, boosting excitement, and backing SpaceX's unwavering determination. In recent developments, while SpaceX makes significant strides, China, a formidable competitor from the East, is also making ambitious strides in the lunar race. On May 7th, China's Chang'e 6 Lunar Farside Sample Return spacecraft successfully entered orbit around the moon, marking another significant step towards the collection of lunar samples. The Chang'e 6 orbiter executed a crucial breaking burn at 10.21 p.m. ETC, decelerating the spacecraft to facilitate its capture by the moon's gravity, as announced by the China National Space Administration. This maneuver occurred approximately 112 hours after the mission's launch on May 3rd. Presently, the Chang'e 6 spacecraft orbits the moon in an elliptical trajectory with a periapsis of around 200 kilometers. It will collaborate with China's recently deployed Zhuizhou 2 relay satellite to conduct orbital correction maneuvers before releasing the combined lander and ascent stage from the orbiting probe for their imminent landing attempt. Moreover, Choi Chao 2 will play a crucial role in maintaining communication during the mission, as direct communication with Earth from the far side of the moon is not feasible. Following these preparations, Chang'e 6 will deploy a 7 kg CubeSat named IQQ into lunar orbit. Subsequently, the main spacecraft will gradually adjust its orbit and initiate the separation of the lander in readiness for the landing phase. Although not officially confirmed, the landing is anticipated to occur in early June. The mission's progression will mirror that of Chang'e 5 with the lander tasked with collecting 2 kilos of lunar samples before returning to lunar orbit. The sample capsule is slated to return to Earth around June 25th, marking the completion of the 53-day mission. This mission serves as a testament to China's ambitious lunar endeavors, yet it merely scratches the surface of their aspirations. The nation has its sights set on two upcoming missions to the South Pole of the Moon, Chang'e 7 in 2026 and Chang'e 8 around 2028. Looking further ahead, China aims to launch its inaugural crewed lunar mission by 2030. These missions are integral components of a broader initiative aimed at establishing a permanent lunar base, the International Lunar Research Station, or ILRS, program slated for the 2030s. 
This collaborative endeavor is attracting participation from numerous countries, serving as a formidable counterpart to Artemis, spearheaded by the United States. Undoubtedly, China's assertive strides in lunar exploration pose a significant challenge to the U.S. In response, it's crucial for NASA and SpaceX to intensify their efforts, with the upcoming Artemis 3 mission in 2026 holding particular promise. Now, more than ever, let's unite and throw our support behind these endeavors to ensure America's continued success in lunar exploration. Together, we can strive for victory in this crucial race to the moon. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.